while the witch filled the house with shrieks of triumph and sang, Row me up some brandio. The witch also, at the poor man's funeral, laughed and sang dirty songs all through his funeral. As it is pointed out, there is something very odd about John Bell's death. The witch had often revealed strength enough to strangle Bell or kill him by hitting him with some object, yet she never made any such attempt. Only, as it were, drove him to despair that it ministered some powerful drug when he was probably dying anyway. In most poltergeist cases, we may feel that the entity is not particularly malicious, but that this explains the lack of injury. Bullying children often threatening their victims with physical damage and may even seem to be on the point of carrying out some of their threat. But there is an abyss of difference between the threat or perhaps lashing out with a stick and missing by a hair's breadth and actually causing bodily harm. Yet the Bell Witch seemed to have been more malicious than most. That's for dang sure. It leads to the speculation that these entities may not be allowed to do actual harm. I know Max has told me that that there are laws and rules set up for human spirits and I guess for others and that they are required to go by these rules. Not all do. But it, I guess it's an honor system. I don't know. They are allowed to torment but not to do damage. This admittedly explains nothing but it is certainly an observation that has struck everyone who has studied poltergeist. After the death of John Bell, the witch seemed to lose interest. It apparently refused to help John Jr. to speak to his dead father, declaring that the dead could not be brought back. But on one occasion, it told John to go to the window on a snowy day and made footprints appear in the snow, which claimed to be uh, identi identifiable as those made by his father's boots. John did not bother to test it out. In 1821, four years after the disturbances began, which is an unusually long period, according to this book, the family was sitting at supper one night when there was this extremely loud, deafening sound of what sounded like a cannonball being fired down their chimney. And it sounded like it hit the, ch you know, hit the floor of the chimney and rolled out into the room and exploded into this huge puff of gray smoke. And the witch's voice suddenly started yelling, I'm going and I'll be gone for seven years. Goodbye to all. And the disturbances ceased. Seven years later, only Lucy Bell and two of her sons remained in the homestead. The rest, including Betsy, had married or left. Once again, the manifestation started from the beginning with scratching noises, then the covers being pulled off the bed. But the family ignored all this. And after two weeks, the manifestation ceased. John Jr. claims that the witch paid him two visits to his home and promised to return to one of his descendants in 107 years. But 1935 passed without any direct descendant of Bell's family being haunted. And then it goes on about who all's documented the case and some other things having to do with it. There's been speculation that, um, that perhaps john and betsy bell were actually carrying on an incestuous relationship and that that's why the witch hated both of them so much and why she sought to slap betsy around and to actually kill john bell but there's there's no real proof of that um there's also I, the the story got so big in its time it was covered in the newspapers all over the country and andrew jackson heard about it and was so curious that he set out with a team of men um you know stout brave military men to come and check it out they got close to the property they got right about to the property line and suddenly the horses wouldn't go any further and there was a voice that came from the bushes very loudly telling them that they weren't going in there unless she gave them permission to. There's lots more. There's lots more little tidbits and neat, interesting things about this story. If, uh, if you found this interesting and you want to learn more, go look around the web. Um, 
Some sites are more reliable than others. Check out Fitzhughes. I think that's probably your best bet. Okay, that's it. I hope you found that interesting. Bye-bye.